Ampere rumors have been swirling around for well over a year now, with many different dyes being talked about that we'll probably never see of the light of day. One such die is a GA101, which many people speculated about, although most reputable sources talking about it described it as a half A100. And to be honest, that's really the only thing it could have been besides, I guess, a hybrid between uh, GA100 and GA102. You know, maybe having a die space that's massive, similar to GA100, but trading some of those CUDA cores for more of the ray tracing components that you get in GA102 and below. At least that's what I was kind of hoping it would be, despite there being little evidence of that. And well, at this point, it's time to just officially say no. All GA101 was ever going to be is a half A100 for data centers. And like I said, that's what most reputable sources said, that this was a 4096 CUDA core non-ray tracing data center card with a 3072-bit HBM2E bus. And... I'm saying this now because it comes from a new source of mine. It's not a big source. You know, you can't have all of your sources be these mulligans that know, you know, all of these details. But having these little sources here and there, you know, maybe someone who works with cards there, maybe someone who has a friend in this part of a company here, it gives you breadcrumbs. And you put enough together, you can get a loaf if that analogy works. And so... Once I received this information from this news source, I sent it to a source that I have used multiple times in the past that I find reliable. And, you know, just blanket asking him about GA101, he said all of the same stuff. And so I went, okay, so this source is probably legitimate. Let me do some extra vetting and see if anything else in his info is interesting. And in fact, there was something interesting. The interesting bit was his elaboration on why it and other cards were canceled and why there's been all this confusion about 8 and 7 nanometer. Basically, he said that NVIDIA was always planning to have at least GA100, 101, 102, and if possible, 103 and 104 made on TSMC 7 nanometer if they had the capacity. But over time, it became clear that they had underestimated how strong TSMC and AMD's were relationship was becoming and so over time nvidia was cutting which cards they would make on seven nanometer one of the first dies they cut from tsmc and said we're just going to have to make it on samsung due to limited capacity is ga 104 they said that will be made on samsung's eight nanometer and then after that it was ga 101 they said okay here's what we're going to do we're going to cut down GA100, that little bit extra so that we have something that's not quite full GA100, but also much more than GA101. One die cut down enough to maximize yields because this is all they're going to get. And then after that, they said, well, we're cutting GA103. We will just cut down GA102 into the 3080 instead of making a 320 bit GA103, as has been discussed before. And then eventually, over time, right, a lot of those early samples I reported on were clearly on TSMC 7 nanometer with those clock speeds. They just came to the conclusion that we can't even make the 3080 and 3080 Ti on TSMC. We're going to have to switch to Samsung. So, again, this part of the video isn't all that much new information, but I do believe this is a bit of interesting palace intrigue. This is more insight into why it was so last minute that they switched everything to Samsung's 8 nanometer. It's because they were cutting parts of their lineup as need be as they found out they couldn't secure more capacity until it came down to all we can make is A100 on TSMC. And just to be clear, I didn't blindly accept this info. I had to vet this source, and frankly, the info had to pass the sniff test. And it did. But you know what didn't? Another clearly fake GPU leak I received. I'm not going to dwell on this. I just thought you guys like to see this, this Ampere GA100 leak here. Honestly, this looks more fake than that RDNA2 leak I received about a month ago. Um, the one that talked about 14 gigabyte graphics card and had errors all over the slides. This one here is hilarious to me just because it's like somehow all of a sudden GA100 has ray tracing cores when we know for a fact GA100 does not have RT cores. Try a little bit harder, trolls. 
And speaking of trying hard, AMD is not having to try as hard as NVIDIA to get capacity at TSMC. And I received some early whispers of a new AMD APU coming out seemingly pretty soon. Now, just like GA101 rumors, there have been rumors of Renoir dies with more than eight compute units for... I mean, since there's been any Renoir rumors at all. In fact, I did an entire video investigating if there could actually be more compute units on Renoir than eight before they showed the die shot. Now, that turned out to not be true, at least of the Renoir dies that are out in the public right now. But at the same time, if you look at the details of that video, I did... I think have some pretty convincing math showing that Renoir would be perfectly fine going up to at least 10 compute units as long as you use the faster DDR4 or DDR4X. And I hypothesized that maybe they will just make a bigger Renoir eventually, even if they haven't yet, that comes with a little more die space for more PCIe lanes and extra compute units. And one of my better sources has sent me some info from an OEM that is in talks with AMD for a new professional APU for laptops. You see, right now Intel has the i9-10980HK and it goes up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. There's actually a Xeon version of this that can use ECC memory as well. Right now, Renoir is limited to just 64 gigabytes of RAM, and there's reports that there's really no point in laptops having something stronger than an RTX 2060 because it only has eight PCIe lanes. Well, supposedly AMD's going to remedy this and bring a true workstation APU to the market. Again, what sounds like pretty soon. Now, the details are scarce, but here's what I've been told. 11 compute units, so if you ask me, this is probably a one compute unit disabled version of those 12 CU Renoir uh, leaks that we saw in the past, and then a higher RAM capacity going up to 128 gigabytes with ECC support, and then outside of that, I actually don't have any confirmation, but I would assume they'll also beef up the amount of I.O. it has, more PCIe lanes, more support for additional USB devices, and so on and so forth, and yeah... I think this could do excellent in the professional market for people who travel and need to do compute with large data sets on the go. You know, I'm not really interested in something like this, but I did ask people in my Discord, and there were a lot of people saying that, yeah, they only really need eight compute units and 16 threads, and then a ton of RAM to run a bunch of data at once. And I guess the only other thing I will say about this recent AMD leak I've received detailing this big Renoir is that AMD, for you professionals out there, is working on their memory controllers for newer Threadrippers, both through microcode updates and for what they're integrating into Milan. Now, most people will say, well, who's buying Intel HEDT chips over Threadripper now? And there are some data sets that can be run 65% faster, I'm told, on a 10980XE over a 3970X. So AMD does have some work to do there, but I'm told that they are doing the work. And you know what? That was going to be the end of this video, but I think I do need to briefly address that big Navi article that came out of Cortex. Cortex actually details almost all of the same stuff I've said with one big difference. He alleges that Big Navi will only get to around 15% better than the 2080 Ti, whereas I've, of course, hypothesized much more than that. And I say hypothesize because I've never had, should I say, consistent sources from within AMD. Like I feel like I truly have now with people connected and even inside Intel and NVIDIA. So it's these little bits and pieces that come out of someone at AMD, but it's mostly people connected to AMD, including that big Oh, I would argue by now overhyped information uh, from my last Ampere video showing NVIDIA themselves within the company are expecting AMD to be 40 to 50% better than the 2080 Ti. And so then where do I, you know, it, it's interesting. I don't see any compute units or specifics about the design in Cortex's leak. And from what I read, it comes from an AIB. AIBs get access to cards that are going to go into production somewhat soon, but AMD tries their best to not let them see what's coming down the pipeline. 
That's often why there are reference cards, by the way, so that they can launch closer to when stuff starts leaking. Here's the weirdest thing, actually. The way he describes ray tracing working is how I've heard it described within the consoles. They are based mostly on RDNA 2. So, yeah, I know we both have legit sources. And I want to just throw a hypothesis out there, guys. Remember the early Big Navi rumors years ago about RDNA 1 that went up to about 64 compute units? No 64 compute unit cards came out, and that was apparently due to power usage issues. What if something similar is happening again, where they were planning to go above 64 compute units, but they're axing the top card? I'm not saying that's what's happening. I don't have any information on it, but I have heard about delays of the very top die. So I guess that's what I'm guessing because I know Cortex isn't lying and I'm not lying. So I believe what he's alleging is the 6800 XT and that there is hopefully still a 6900 XT. In fact, if you look at my big Navi info, I have one person connected to OEMs who says that AMD reps themselves are saying they only expect to beat the RTX 3080 this year, and yet the top one will double 5700 XT performance. Maybe that's what's going on. This year they can beat the 3080, but they won't have the very top one out until quarter one next year. In fact, it's always been rumored that they will have to roll out the dies separately due to problems with the very top one. And in fact, if we look at what's supposedly coming out this year on video cards, it looks like a 16 gigabyte 2048 bit HBM2E card. And honestly, Hynex is going into mass production of blazing fast HBM2E early right now. So... I don't know. All I'm going to say is this. I still find it hard to believe they can at least make a card, as I've long said, 25% better than the 2080 Ti. I mean, literally, if they just overclocked what's in the Xbox Series X, like a 56 compute unit card, and gave it near a terabyte per second of bandwidth, over double the bandwidth of the 5700 XT, even assuming no IPC increase, which if you do some scratch math based on Mark Cerny's info, it should be at least a 7% IPC increase. I think this thing should still be 20 to 30% stronger than a 2080 Ti. So I don't know what to say. Hopefully it will be. I hope this isn't another Vega situation, or if you ask me, more likely a canceling the top die situation like what they did with RDNA 1. Even if that card were to use 400 watts and NVIDIA were to release a 400 watt 3090, if AMD won by even 5%, it would destroy NVIDIA's mindshare and bring prices back down to earth. So as Cortex has told me offline, I really hope that that's what's going to happen. And no matter what happens, I will continue to update you all on what I hear, what I can dig up, and what's going on, whether in these focused videos or on broken silicon. So please subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed this video and ring the bell button to hear more updates on Ampere, Big Navi, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and the army of AMD APUs. And if you have the extra money, but only if you do, please consider supporting me on Patreon to get access to exclusive podcast without any ads every week, including one coming out tomorrow just to patrons. All right. Thank you for watching. <laughs>